Thank you, Kartikeya, and such a great pleasure to share the stage with all eminent people, especially my dear friend, Mr. Khurshid, whom we have always had very healthy debates with. Uh, I think the, the fight today is constantly this, uh, at least on the cultural side. And to a large extent, I believe that it's the culture and the civilization which then defines uh, the hard power. First, you need to have that sense of rootedness to your identity, to where you come from, your civilization, and then you go external and you're able to conquer newer vistas. So there, I think, as you rightly said, there's been this very, very bitter contestation between what is popularly known as the Nehruvian consensus to what is happening today. Uh, I think Mr. Nehru uh, was, uh, you know, it's product of his time, so there was also the time when a new nation was being born out of the bloodbath of partition and all the other problems that uh, emerged with it. Uh, but in the process, uh, I think there was a deep rupture with the past. Uh, he was willing, I think, to make uh, a new India that had, at best, you know, a very tenuous relationship with the past, where the past was great to be seen as a fossilized museum piece, but never as a living tradition uh, in most cases. I think the flashpoint, and if we discuss that in the context of what happened in Ayodhya last month, uh, is uh, the, the, the flashpoint of Somnath, uh, where I think, in my view, Nehru would have been very happy to have given up the, the temple to ASI to have it renovated as a museum piece rather than as a living tradition. And he had this constant feud with the then president, Dr. Rajendra Prasad or KM Munshi, saying, I'm very, very worried about Hindu revivalism uh, and what it would do to my image of my government both inside India and outside India. So this preponderance and this predilection with uh, you know, your secular credentials, so to say, uh, almost meant that the largest community in the country had to tone down its appearance. Every other community in the country had the right to, uh, you know, wear its identity on its sleeve, but somehow if a Hindu even mentioned it with a little more, uh, you know, uh, assertion, was seen as a communal and a bigoted uh, kind of an expression. Now, when we talk of identity, uh, the, the basic moorings and the underpinnings, whether we like it or not, is not necessarily in the theological and in the religious sense, but in the cultural sense, uh, our identity certainly has a lot of uh, pre uh, predominance of Hindu, uh, you know, culture. So to, to distance that and make that rupture from the past, I think that is where all the schisms come. And today, while we are forging ahead on all the other fronts, whether it's economy or in the military uh, front, uh, the social schisms and the social trouble we are seeing are all battles of the past, where history becomes such a live battlefield. We are constantly thinking of renaming cities, renaming towns. We have not made, uh, you know, peace with our past. Uh, there's been subterfuge, there's been whitewashing, uh, you know, the past. And as a result, these conflicts keep coming, and that in turn defines what I think uh, the narrative becomes.